I was not what you would call a well-adjusted teenager. All teens admittedly stumble through their own brand of awkwardness, but mine came in the form of about 100 extra pounds, bad skin, and a mild unibrow. Mix in the fact that by the age of 15, I still hadn't discovered shaving my legs or makeup, and I was your picture-perfect example of a sad little girl struggling desperately out how to figure out how to be a woman. The opposite sex scared the living shit out of me, and not surprisingly, I was horribly inexperienced in that area. However, that all changed the summer after my sophomore year. My best friend, who was notably athletic and slim in build, had decided she wanted to attend La Jolla Fitness Camp. Not wanting to go alone, her mother had contacted mine to see if I wanted to join. Apprehensive at the word fitness, I perused their website skeptically with my mom. It became more and more clear the longer we gazed at pictures of fat children, sweaty and red-faced, forcing smiles to the camera as they played kickball and ran around a track, exactly what this camp was. Fitness camp was apparently the new PC way to say fat camp. And since I was the only fat friend she had, I had been invited along. My heart was torn. On the one hand, I was offended and kind of scared, but on the other, I was fat. <laughs> I had never made any attempts to lose weight, though I had spent plenty of hours crying after I first saw the number on the scale creep past 200. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that this was my one and only chance to change it. Fat camp was pretty much how I pictured it. Lots of fat kids, a whole lot fatter than I was, groaning and wheezing our way through five hours of exercise a day, discussing our favorite fattening foods over our calorie-managed meals with a graphicness that could rival any porn. Like it or not, though, I was among my peers, and I had become more comfortable in my skin during my few months there than I had ever felt before. Beyond anything else, I was actually losing weight, and despite what my fellow campers seemed to think, giving up the shit I binge ate on a regular basis didn't seem to be all that hard. And then, of course, there was Camp Counselor Rusty. <laughs> he was a golden-haired god. Tan, sculpted, a surfer, with a perfectly chiseled face and bright blue eyes. Every girl, and even a few guys at camp's, camp watched him even more passionately than we talked about the food we missed. <laughs> I would put myself to sleep at night with fantasies of losing weight and discovering tweezers and <laughs> returning to camp the next year to have him fall desperately in love with me. He was a large part of the reason why I got up every morning to shuffle a mile around the track. <laughs> I had never met a man so beautiful before. When camp ended, I had lost a total of 15 pounds. Fueled by the high my success had given me and fantasies of becoming a slim, mysterious beauty that would win the heart of every rusty on the planet, I became one of the few fat camp success stories that exist. <laughs> I thought about Rusty less and less after the first few post-camp months, but every once in a while his baby blue eyes would pop into mind and my heart would melt a little bit. After high school I picked up and I moved to London. I spent some time backpacking around Europe and feeling lighter without the label of that girl who used to be fat on my shoulders. I began to explore my sexuality. By the time I settled into my first London flat and began school, I'd made out with more beautiful European men than I could have ever dreamed of, and I'd even touched a couple penises. <laughs> my virginity, however, was still very much intact. About a month into my London living, my flatmates and I headed out to a large nightclub in the center of the city, a hot spot for tourists, cheap drinks, dirty dancing, and general cheesy nightclub atmosphere most 18-year-olds crave. As we walked into the dark nightclub, lights flashing around me, my eyes landed on a face that made my heart stop. Rusty. The golden-haired god. 
in the flesh, standing across the room from me halfway around the world. I managed to slightly squeak out an explanation for my dumbstruck face to my flatmate. I could barely breathe. Well, go get him. Now's your chance to fulfill the dreams of that sad, ugly, fat girl. <laughs> she said, perhaps losing some tact in the translation to English. I spent the next 15 minutes, eyes locked squarely on my target as it downed a few shots of liquid courage. I stumbled over to him, flashed the smile I'd practiced in the bathroom mirror, and sparks flew. Well, if you can call two fucked up people in a club making out and groping each other sparks. <laughs> Whatever it was, I didn't care. Despite the fact that I was two sheets to the wind and he was a hurricane ahead of me, my wildest teenage dreams were coming true and nothing would ruin it. By 2 a.m., Rusty, my flatmate, and I piled into a cab and headed back to our place. I don't rem remember the drive home. I do, however, remember straddling my childhood dreamboat on my bed as we sloppily kissed and undressed. I could not believe it. Not only was I about to finally lose my V-card, but to the first guy I had actually ever fantasized about doing it with. I drunkenly excused myself to the bathroom and freshened up, proceeded to give myself a five minute pep talk in the mirror. You can do this. You can do this. <laughs> Upon returning to my room, I didn't notice Rusty right away, rather a small smear of white powder on my bedside table. He had seemed a little more fucked up than I'd ever seen booze accomplish, and I figured cocaine had fueled most of his night. It was not cocaine. My Prince Charming had spent most of the evening doing ketamine. For those of you unfamiliar with ketamine, it is a party drug derived from a horse tranquilizer. The high, apparently, is otherworldly, taking the user to a place bordering on tripping and leaving their body. When taken in excess, the user may enter what is referred to as a K-hole, and negative side effects may include nausea, respiratory problems, and loss of control of bodily functions. <laughs> I looked across the room to see Rusty standing by my closet, but naked. I sat on the bed and stared, wide-eyed, jaw open at his perfectly chiseled naked form. He was beautiful. That is, except for the look on his face. He stared past me, eyes glazed over, mouth slightly open, drool dripping from one corner. <laughs> and that's when it happened. The loss of control of bodily functions. <laughs> and I noticed the poop. <laughs> slowly draining down his legs onto my white shag carpet. <laughs> Have you ever seen somebody shit themselves? I'm not talking about a baby or a child. I mean a full-grown adult. There's nothing pitiful as you might imagine some geriatric person in an old folks home trying to cling on to one last shred of dignity. No. Watching a healthy 20-something year guy get so high he drools and shits himself can only be summed up in two words. Nightmarishly horrifying. I couldn't move. I couldn't speak. I tried closing my eyes and opening them again, hoping that what I had just witnessed was not actually happening. It was, though, very much happening. The golden god I was about to have sex with was shitting himself. His arms began to lift slightly as he attempted to walk towards me, leaving poopy little footprints as he made his way to the bed where he apparently thought we were still having sex. I jumped up and screamed and ran into my flatmate's room, barely able to breathe as I sputtered out an explanation as to what was occurring in my bedroom. 
Luckily, my Russian counterpart had much less fear over confronting the drugged up poop monster in my room and proceeded to run in, screaming in her harsh mother tongue, throw a sheet over him, pull him to the door, and throw him out of our flat. <laughs> Had I been less horrified, more mature, less drunk, or just a better person, I probably would have had second thoughts about the possible ramifications of throwing a naked person who was so high they'd shat themselves out on the street. But I couldn't form thoughts. I curled into a ball on the couch and cried as Mama Russia stroked my hair and laughed. <clears throat> the aftermath was almost more horrifying than the incident itself. I woke up on the couch hungover and still very much a virgin and almost had myself convinced it had all been a bad dream until my roommate laughed over her bowl of cereal and taunted me with a who's pooping <laughs> realizing my nightmare had very much been a reality I marched to my room and proceeded to clean up the feces of the boy who I once would have sold my soul to sleep with